video will take you through the Cambridge Specimen Paper 2, question 1a. This is an example of a question where you are given a variety of pieces of information, including ratios, etc., that have already been calculated, and then only one or two actual figures that would be found in the financial statements. And then you are required, in this case, to draw up the full statement of income and statement of financial position. This can certainly fox many people, as it doesn't appear as if you've got enough information to be able to do this. However, it is actually a lot easier than you would think. If you can get used to doing this and working backwards, and don't take fright at the fact that you've only got a few things given to you, you can actually do really, really well in these types of questions. The first thing you need to do is set out your question paper. In other words, lay out a basic statement of income. Um, you should realize that obviously you would start with your revenue, subtract cost of sales to get gross, gross profit, and then you would list all your expenses. In this case, we are given so little information that we actually just need to show expenses at a to as a total figure. However, if you're not aware of this, you might decide to actually leave a number of lines there. Um, you can never go wrong leaving extra lines even if you don't use them. And then obviously um, work out the profit for the year. The statement of financial position will always have your basic headings. Remember that the statement of financial position actually illustrates the accounting equation. In other words, on the one side you've got assets and on the other side you've got your equity and liabilities. That is the accounting equation. From this, all you need to do is then divide it up into non-current and current. So for the assets we just have non-current and current assets and in fact I'm going to make them bold so you can see them more clearly and then you can work out your total assets. Within current assets you might decide to leave a few blank lines or you might realize that you will always have inventory, trade and other receivables and cash and cash equivalents and these do need to be in that order I'm afraid. Basically you're putting them in the order of liquidity in other words how easily or quickly you can turn them to cash. So cash will always be the last one trade and other receivables you've already made the sale and just need to get the money out of it and then the top one is your inventory which you still need to sell. Then if we go and have a look at the equity and liabilities in this case you obviously need to start with your capital or your owner's equity you can call it equity if you want and then your liabilities need to be split up into non-current and current liabilities and then you work out your total equity and liabilities. Again, you should be aware of the fact that your current liabilities will have trade and other payables um, and probably not much else in it. If you wanted to, again, you could leave a few extra lines. That wouldn't be a problem. Um, so now that you've laid out your financial statements, you can now go and have a look at the information and use each piece as it is given to you. To start with, we are given the gross profit margin as 54%. Since we don't know either the gross profit nor the sales, remember that margin means a percentage of sales, you can't calculate any amount as yet. However, what I like to do is take this 54% and make a note of it for myself. So I would just write here 54% of sales. That means that as soon as I find out what my revenue or sales amount is, I can immediately work out the gross profit. Similarly, if the profit margin, in other words profit as a percentage of sales, is 18%, I will go to my profit for the year and write here 18% of sales so that I know how I need to calculate it. The current ratio, in other words, current assets compared to current liabilities, is given as 1,6 to 1. Now, at this point, I don't have either of these numbers. If I had one of them, I could automatically go and work out the other, but this is not the case. So, what I like to do then is say current assets we know is 1,6 times current liabilities and I'll just make a little note of that for myself and then as soon as I get the current liabilities figure I can then work out my current assets or vice versa. 
So at the same time, I'm going to go to my current liabilities and I'm going to say this is my current assets divided by 1 comma 6. And then no matter which one we get, we'll be able to work the other one out. Trade receivables turnover is given as 40 days. Now, this one is a little bit more complicated. Trade receivables includes both your receivables and your sales. Um, and we don't know yet which one of these is actually going to be the one that we are given. The easiest here is probably to actually go and write out the entire formula, um, which would be my trade receivables divided by my total sales. And then if I take all of that and I say times 365, sorry, that must be without the underline, times 365, that will give me 40 days. Now, at this stage, we don't know which of those we've got and which we don't. But as soon as we get one of them, we can plug it in and work the other one out as a missing figure. So for now, I'm just going to leave it just like that. And I'll come back to it and use it later when I get more information. Similarly, the return on capital employed is also a little bit more complex. So I'm going to take that 5,4% and I'm also going to show the calculation for this. Remember that return on capital employed is saying my profit um, divided by the total capital employed. And remember capital employed means my owner's equity plus my non-current liabilities and at this stage I actually don't have any of these figures um, and then I'm going to go and say all of that is going to equal 5,4% but I don't yet have any of those and there's three missing figures here again just like we'll do above as soon as we get one or two of them we'll pop them in and then we can work out the missing amount Right, now let's go and have a look at some of the numbers and we breathe a sigh of relief because now suddenly it gets a little bit easier. Numbers are very simple to pop in where they need to go. Cost of sales of 248400 will obviously go to the statement of income as a negative 248800. And now that I've got that, sorry, 248400, I thought something was a bit wrong there. As soon as I've got that, I can now use this figure to work out both my revenue and my gross profit. How, you ask? Well, although I haven't been given the gross profit, I know that gross profit is 54% of sales. Now, if that is the case, that means that my cost of sales, therefore, must be um, the other 46%. Of sales. In other words, a hundred, if revenue is 100% um, and we know that gross profit is 54, cost of sales must be 46. So what we can do now is take this cost of sales figure here of 248400 and say if we use that and divide it by that 46%, that is then going to give us the revenue of 540,000. Now we are well on our way to working out the rest of, or completing in fact, this entire statement of income. The gross profit can then either be worked out as 54%, or you can just minus the cost of sales figure that is given, and you get 291,600. The expenses then are going to be um, something we don't yet know what, but just make sure that you show them as in brackets. But the profit for the year is 18% of that 540,000. In other words, of sales, 540,000. And we can then work that out um, and get 97,200. And then the only missing amount is the expenses, which I can then work out as a balancing figure of 194,400. So this over here, I'm just going to make a little note here, is the missing figure. And that's how you complete your statement of income. It wasn't so difficult, was it? And interestingly enough, that was with only one figure and two percentages that were given. Um, so it does seem very strange that with only three pieces of information, we were able to do the rest. But hopefully now you can see how that is actually completed.
We can now then use that profit um, and realize that over here we had a formula. So we can now show that our profit was 97200 but we're still waiting for equity and non-current liabilities. But maybe you're starting to see how as we get information, we fill in the gaps. It's quite lovely how it all just fills itself in. Right, let's go and look at the next piece of information. Um, we are told that the closing inventory is 38,000, a lovely easy one. Inventory we just pop in as 38,000 as it was given. Similarly, we know that cash is 30308. So I pop that in. And the last thing that I'm told is that the long-term loan is 1 million. So we know that there is a loan over here of 1 million. And you might remember it now, or you might go and find it later. Um, if you remember it now, great. You can pop that in over here in our ROCE calculation as 1 million. In fact, let me make a little note um, over here so that you remember what we are doing. That's our return on capital employed. So now we can actually work out owner's equity as the missing figure by simply saying, well, 97,200 equals 5,4 times X being the owner's equity plus a million and then simply solving for the X once we've got the X on the top. And you'll then be able to work out your capital amount over here um, by doing, let me write the calculation in for you just in case you're a little confused. It would be the 97,200 which remember that was our amount of the profit over here um, and then we are going to say divided by the 5,4 percent and then we're going to say times 40 over Sorry, now I'm looking at the wrong thing. Sorry, that is totally wrong. Ta divided by 5,4 times 100. I'm getting confused with my um, receivables turnover. My apologies. So we times it by 100 because this is working out as a percent. Or what you could do is, in fact, I, I almost would prefer to do this, is say 0, 0, 0,54 because that is 5,4%. It's completely up to you which way you want to do it. Let's actually show the whole thing in brackets. 54 um, divided by 5,4% oh, equals 0, 0,054. So we'll divide that. Um, and then we will say minus the 1 million non-current liabilities. And, sorry, space there, put another bracket over there. And that will then easily work out to show you 800,000 as your capital figure. So we are now well on track to starting fill in all these different bits and pieces of information. Um, once we have got that, we can then go um, also and work out from the trade receivables figure, um, we know the sales. Now, this is an example of where I say we could have put the sales in earlier if we had remembered about it, or we can look at it now and go, hang on a minute, I do know my sales figure. So let's go up and have a look and see there's 540,000 as the sales figure and um, pop that in over here, 540,000. And once we've got that, you can then work out trade receivables as the missing figure. And that's where we are now going to set 540,000, which remember was the sales times, and this is where that 40 comes in divided by 365. That will then give us a trade receivables figure and it's an odd figure don't get worried by that fact we know the different items the individual pieces of the current assets you can see here that it'll be very easy to just add them together to get um, the total current assets of one two seven four eight six by simply adding inventory plus receivables plus cash now, remember that we saw that we had a formula over here. Now, we don't need to use that one over here. However, it's a clue that we can now go and work out the current liabilities because we know that the current assets are 12, 7, 4, 8, 6, 
and if we then divide by 1,6, we can work out that the current liabilities or trade and other payables, which is what it must be, is going to be 79679. And that is simply by, again, just doing calculations. So you can see that we are slowly filling up all the bits and pieces. Now we've got all the equity and liabilities. There's nothing missing over here. So it's very simple to work out the total amount of 187, sorry, 1879679. Now remember that the statement of financial position I told you at the beginning of this question is showing the accounting equation. In other words, your total equity and liabilities must equal the total assets. So I'm going to take this amount and I'm going to pop it in over here because it must be the same. Sorry, 1879. 679 and then we will be able to work out the non-current assets as a missing figure and so that will then be um, quite simply 1752193 and voila you've actually got a complete set of financial statements amazingly from this tiny little bit of information. I do hope that this has simplified the process for you and made it a lot easier to understand. And hopefully in future, when you're faced with something like this, it won't be nearly as daunting.